Okay, now that we've introduced uh, a regression line, ordinary least squares, uh, let's look at an example. Incidentally, why are we calling it ordinary least squares? Uh, from the previous set of lectures, the least part is the minimization, and the squares part was the fact that we had to square the residuals. So when we were talking about how this thing works, uh, we're minimizing over beta hat 0 and beta hat 1 the function uh, of the sum of i equals 1 to n of ui hat squared. So the ordinary least squares, the least part is the minimization and the squares part is the squared. Just wanted to get that in there. Okay, so for our example, test scores and student-teacher ratios. We have a population regression line, which is test score equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times student-teacher ratios plus some error term u. The question of interest is, what is beta 1? What is the slope or the relationship between student-teacher ratios and test scores? As we increase or decrease student-teacher ratios, beta 1 is going to tell us how test scores change. So beta 1, remember is equal to the derivative of test scores with respect to student-teacher ratios. So how, does, how do test scores change with respect to a change in student-teacher ratios? Again, we have a scatter plot from the book. This is the, relation, this is the scatter plot of student-teacher ratios and test scores of actual data points. It's not obvious what this relationship is just from this scatter plot, it looks like the correlation is not super high, it's just sort of a cloud. But if we put the estimated regression line through here, we can see that the slope is negative. <clears throat> this regression line says that um, if we set student-teacher ratios equal to zero and extend this out, the intercept is 698.9, so this is an estimate of beta hat zero, and the slope is negative 2.28. This is an estimate of beta hat 1. We could also draw in the residuals for each of these data points. So if we have these data points, the difference between the data point and the line, the y on that would fall on that line, or the y hats that would fall along the line, test score hats, that's what's over here, are the residuals. And that's what the OLS is minimizing. So each one of these data points is associated with a residual. We could draw in the residuals for all of these, but it would get kind of messy. And again, what OLS is doing is it's adjusting the slope and the intercept of this line until those residuals are minimized. Actually, to be precise, the square of those residuals are minimized. <clears throat> so the results of that, the estimated slope is negative uh, 2.28, so test scores. This is our estimated regression line. The intercept is 698.9. The slope is negative 2.28. And then that's our estimated regression line. Ah, I have it written there anyways. The interpretation is the district, school district. So each I represents one school district. A district with one more student per teacher on average has test scores 2.28 points lower than uh, districts with uh, one less student per teacher. In other words, as we make a marginal change, as we uh, uh, increase the number of students per, uh, per teacher, the test scores go down by 2.28 points. The intercept, if taken literally, means that districts with zero students per teacher would have a predicted test score of 698.9. Does that make any sense? Not really, because we're not going to have any districts with zero students per teacher. What would be the point of a teacher with no students? So this is sort of a, a caution uh, going forward. Don't extrapolate beyond the data that you have. Um, don't take the regression line literally to mean that uh, we could have negative students. So if we go back over here, we could, we could extrapolate this regression line past zero and talk about uh, class sizes of negative numbers of students, like negative 15 students, but that doesn't really make any sense. <clears throat> Using the data and regression to make predicted values and residuals. Okay, 
So let's take, for example, one district in the data set, and that's Antelope, California. If we go to that row in our data, we would find that the student-teacher ratio on average for Antelope, California is 19 students per teacher, 19.33 students per teacher, with a test score, uh, an average test score of 657.8. So these are the actual data points. If we went to our data, this is what we, we would observe. We, we, if we had sampled Antelope, California, this is what we would have actually observed. The predicted value from our regression line, so here's Here's our predicted regression line. We're going to take the value of beta hat 0, plug it in, beta hat 1, plug it in, take the value of, of x for Antelope County and plug that in, and then we get the predicted value for, uh, for Antelope. Here is the actual value for Antelope. Do it in red. Oh, it changes all of it to red. Here is the uh, predicted value for Antelope based on our regression line. So what, what we're doing here is if this is student-teacher ratios and this is test scores and this is the actual data point for antelope, here's our regression line, we're getting the predicted value right there, the one that falls actually on that regression line. This is the y hat for antelope. This is the actual y for antelope the actual data point and the regression line is getting the predicted value and then the difference is the residual and the residual is just going to be equal to three so that difference is equal to three and that's what we're we're getting with the residuals we're minimizing those res residuals with ordinary least squares and this is and we can get predicted values with our estimated regression line